Hello, and welcome to the Consumer Toolbox. I am your host, Milagros Johnson, and I'm the director of the Mayor's Office of Consumer Information in Springfield. We are a local consumer program funded by and working in cooperation with the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. We serve consumers of Hamden County and parts of Worcester County. Our program's mission is to provide you, the consumer, with the necessary tools to make informed decisions. We strive to educate you on your consumer rights and prevent you from becoming a victim of a scam or fraud. Each month, we bring to you a local guest speaker who will share his or her expertise and further enrich you with consumer knowledge. Our motto is, education is the best prevention, and the, and the Consumer Toolbox gives you the tools you need to become a savvy consumer. I hope you stay and watch. This morning, I have a guest, a very special guest from the Hamlin County District Attorney's Office. It's Joan O'Brien. Thank you, Joan, for joining us Thank you very much today. for having me. Well, you know, it's springtime, and consumers, including myself, are going to be doing a lot of spring cleaning. That includes work around the home, improvements, probably cleaning up and disposing of old papers and documents. And that obviously lights, lights the bulb of my head and says, scams, fraud, what should I do to protect myself and protect my interest? Because I'm concerned about protecting myself, obviously that's a concern that it's for me, for consumers to also protect themselves. So with your years of experience and the things that you hear, plus the things that I hear, I thought it, would, it might be a wonderful idea for us to sit down and share some stories and educate consumers. And basically it's consumer beware of signs to look for and how to protect themselves this spring season through the summer, of course, and fall, and not just this season, but ongoing, because we have to always beware of what's going on. There are scams, there's fraud, there's identity theft, and I've talked about many of those subjects here on this program before, but it continues to be a problem. And so we can never over-educate consumers. Would you, wouldn't you agree with that? I absolutely okay. agree. So tell me of the stories. First of all, tell me, let's go back, and if you can describe to me exactly what your role is at the Hamlin County District Attorney's Office and the types of cases that you hear and what you do. Mm -hmm. I'm an assistant district attorney. Mm -hmm. um, I am also the chief of the persons of the elders and persons with disabilities mm -hmm. unit at the DA's office, which was really begun um, in 2011. It, it continues. Um, I look at all of the cases dealing with elders and persons with disabilities throughout mm -hmm. the county, and uh, we prosecute uh, numerous cases, um, and they range from um, theft, uh, different types of fraud. Um, some different types of, mm -hmm. of abuse as well. And one thing that we've done in the DA's office since uh, 2011 is we have a program called EASE, Education Against Senior Exploitation. And that is a program that we've taken to a number of um, cities and towns. Councils on Aging um, usually book us, mm -hmm. as well as assisted living facilities, um, other uh, communities, mm -hmm. community residential programs. If um, I can interrupt, and, I think that's yes. how I met you. Yes. At one of them. <laughs> that's Wonderful. right. Mm -hmm. At one of them, that's mm -hmm. correct. Um, and so we, uh, it's basically myself, mm -hmm. um, someone from Greater Springfield Senior Services, as well as a victim witness advocate from our um, DA's office. And we go to these various places and discuss with them the things that we hear, uh, things to guard against, fraud, abuse, su such, as, mm -hmm. such as what we were talking about. And um, Ann Sabato talks about financial abuse. I usually talk about other types of abuse and things that they need to guard against and watch to protect themselves out in the community. And uh, the victim witness advocate usually speaks um, regarding what it's like to actually be uh, to be going to court as the victim of a crime because um, luckily most people that we come across have never had to go into court and the most that they hear about as far as court cases are concerned is what they see on TV and that really isn't the case. So we try to educate them and tell them if they ever are the victim of a crime what they really are going to be faced with and mm -hmm. it's not as scary as most people think and it's not like TV. So. Um, Regarding scams in, in the springtime, one thing that I've noticed is that now there are a lot of contractor 
trucks that are out on the streets. And while the majority of contractors are, are excellent, do a great job, and you never have to worry about them, there are certain people out there that um, are out to just um, make a dollar and to do whatever they can and not do the work. Mm -hmm. um, and probably the best thing that can be done is not to do things in a quick, hurried manner. Um, if someone comes to the door, and we've had cases like this, saying, um, I was working one street over, I have extra material, I can sell it to you cheap, I'll do it right now, and it, ordinarily it will cost $2,000. If you pay me cash now, I'll take 800 and that will be that. And usually the consumer says, great, I'll great, do it. Great deal. Well, well, that should be a red flag. That's instantly. exactly correct. That should instantly be a red flag. That's true. Mm -hmm. if, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Mm -hmm. And so what we found in those types of cases is that they will pay. Uh, either the work is not done, the material is not the type of material that they expect it to be, and then that person leaves and they're never heard from again. Um, we have been able to trace some of those and, and tried to prosecute them. Um, and, but, it, but it's very, very difficult to do. So if people just had the presence of mind to think for a moment and say, okay, if I do this right now, is this something good for me or bad for me? And, and what will happen is the scam artists will prey on people's, mm -hmm. um, they prey on emotions, they prey on, on the quickness and people not really thinking about what they're doing. So they will say, you, you know, I'm gonna go next, I'm gonna go the next street over, I'm gonna, going to go to your neighbor, you're really gonna miss out on this, you have to decide on this right now. That should be enough to tell you not to do it. And the thing that I would encourage consumers also, I've heard this before, is just step back. And I heard this from another officer, Will, from the Chicago Police Department. Mm -hmm. I love that phrase, step back. Mm -hmm. And think about it, because if, if you're going to give someone your money, you want to make sure you know who you're giving it to. Mm -hmm. A lot of these alleged contractors claim they're, they're contractors, and they're just handymen claiming to be contractors. Anyone can make up a business card. Mm -hmm. Anyone can make up a contract mm -hmm. and use a, make up a, a license number. You want to verify. That's so important is verifying um, the company or the individual. Mm -hmm. Even if you just Google the individual's name, you'd be surprised what you can get um, online. And it's so simple. And if you don't have a computer, call someone. Call your library and say, I need help. Can you please look this up for me. Um, call our office, call the DA's office. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty, call your local senior center. There's, there are plenty of resources available to help consumers. So they should never feel like they have nowhere to go. And so they gave in to the offer. So always step back and think about it and do research. You, we work hard for our money and we shouldn't have to throw it away. Especially if it's a scam and you'll never be able to recover it. Exactly, mm -hmm. and, and I think that if people were to just even step back, um, mm -hmm. as you say, and call in, call a neighbor, mm -hmm. call a friend, mm -hmm. call a relative, and say, this is what's going on, do you think I should do it, or can you come over, and maybe we can decide together, um, probably the person that's at the door is, is going to leave, because they know that this person is not going to, they're not going to be able to take the money from this person if they do step back, as you say. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very important. People should think of, about even signing contracts. If, if someone comes to the door or you have a contract with someone and you're, you're going to contract out certain home improvements, and that individual says, here's the contract, I need to get started, please just sign it now, we'll deal with everything later. Don't do it. It's it's not that important. If 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 you need to get it done right of right away, you can certainly say, okay, one day is not going to matter. So hold on to the contract. Read it. If there's something you don't understand or you want a set, another set of eyes on it, mm -hmm. that's the smartest thing to do mm -hmm. because things that you may look at, you may over overlook certain things in the contract. So look at them. If there are questions, if you can make changes, discuss it. Don't do anything quickly. And I, I tell people that all the time, even when it comes to phone scams. Don't do anything spur of the moment. Mm -hmm. You need to really concentrate, think about it, and, and make your decision. And then you make wiser mm -hmm. decisions that way. I have to say that a lot of seniors say, when they call our office or I meet them out in an outreach presentation, they say to them, you know, I made a mistake. I, I did something I shouldn't have done. You know, I, I bought something or I signed an agreement or I accepted some terms and conditions over the phone and it was a bad decision that I made and 
I did it without consulting with my children or my loved ones because I thought I can prove to them that I'm still independent, and yet it was a poor decision. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to have a confidant. It's always good to consult with a family member, someone that you can trust with your finances that, like you said, can re help you review the contract and understand exactly what you're signing. And never do something spontaneously, sleep on it. What may be good to, for you today, what you may think may be a good thing to do, may not sound or feel as good tomorrow, mm -hmm. the next day, so always sleep on it. When, when mm -hmm. people get phone calls, we find that when people um, get phone calls about certain things and they make those spur of the mo mm -hmm. moment decisions, mm -hmm. Um, many of them are too afraid to even come forward and say something to a loved one mm -hmm. because they'll be afraid mm -hmm. that they they will think, gee, I can't leave them alone anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. There's something happening. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and so they get scared. That is the worst thing they can do. Mm -hmm. The best thing they can do is just to, to either call someone and say, I just did this. Maybe there's a way of undoing it if mm -hmm. you made a phone call or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, right. We had an individual at one of my presentations who said that the same, this thing happened to her. She got a phone call from somebody that she thought was the bank. And um, this person was very nice on the phone, had most of her information. And uh, because he was pleasant, engaging, mm -hmm. as they usually are, uh, he had all of her information and, and she kept on saying, okay, yes, that's my address, that's my phone number, et cetera, et cetera, and he had her social security number. Mm -hmm. And he started to say her social security number, which was correct up until the last two digits. And then she said, oh, no, no, that's you almost right. You have to have the last two wrong. He said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, I wrote it down incorrectly. And, um, and then he, they had another, a few pleasantries and got off the phone. And she thought for a minute and she got concerned. And it, the first thing and the smartest thing she could have done was call a friend and said, I think that this person may not be from my bank. So that person came over, they made a phone call, and as it turned out, it wasn't anyone from their bank. But they were able to stop any problems that could have arisen mm -hmm. by telling the bank this person has their information and put a hold on things so that she was not ultimately the victim of a scam. But had she not said that, then she would have had more trouble whether it would have been through her, her um, bank account or credit cards or something. So it's it, everybody makes mistakes. It can happen. We're, we've all been there. We've all done mm -hmm. things that we say, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. But the best thing they can do is actually call somebody and try to undo it. No one is right. going to think any worse of them. They're mm -hmm. going to think that it was smart of them to actually reach out. Right. You said earlier that usually they're afraid. Mm -hmm. I want to add to that. They're oftentimes embarrassed, embarrassed. too. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing to be embarrassed of. We're humans. We make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Simply stated, we make all make mistakes. And as far as, you know, the pressure and how convincing they are and how bold they're getting, the scam artist. I have to share a personal story with you. I recently spent a good half an hour with my parents because I, I was at work that day. I remember that day specifically. And it was a very busy day with phone calls from consumers reporting scams and I was reading on it and everywhere I turned, every phone call, everything I read was about a scam fraud. And I said, I need to sit down with my parents. And I said, you guys need to sit down and listen to me. You need to hear what's going on without, of course, disclosing any confidential information. But I told them the facts of what is going on. Two days later, Joan, my, my dad was taking a shower and my mom heard the door. It was just getting dark and she heard the doorbell and she thought, hmm, that's strange. No one usually visits at this time. She has a small glass panel on her front door and she thought it could be um, her, she thought it could be her, my nephew, her grandson, and she went to the door, and there was a tall, dark-skinned fellow at the door, and he flashed a badge at her and said, police, open the door. And my mom immediately remembered what I had just told her the two days before, and she screamed, get out of here, I'm calling the police. I mean, she screamed at the top of her lungs where my dad heard it in the bathroom, and the man ran. And she called me and I said, Mom, why are you calling me? You said you were going to call the police. And I said, you need to call the police. And she did. And I said, you need to call your neighbors and let them know that there's this man pretending to be the police. 
and he wasn't. And he wasn't dressed in a uniform, but you know, detectives sometimes carry mm -hmm. a badge right. around their neck. Um, and so she couldn't stop crying and thanking me. I'm so glad that you spend the time. So education mm -hmm. is the best prevention. And that's the reason why we're here today. Mm -hmm. Consumers need to listen and mm -hmm. they need to empower themselves and be alert and get savvy because scams don't have to happen to them. Exactly, mm -hmm. and and the smartest thing that, mm -hmm. that she could have done was do the screaming, mm -hmm. but as mm -hmm. well, even if she didn't do that, if she just waited for a moment and said, okay, um, hold on a minute and not open the door mm -hmm. and go make a phone call, call the police, there's somebody mm -hmm. here, is there a problem, mm -hmm. or go get your dad and, mm -hmm. and, and take it from there. But instead of immediately, instinctively mm -hmm. opening the door, which most people would mm -hmm. have, there's nothing wrong with putting the brakes on and, and waiting for a moment. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks that they have to make a decision if somebody tells them to do it. You have to do it now. Open the door. Mm -hmm. They feel as though they're compelled to do that because they're told to, and if they just try to understand that they don't have to do that. That's not something that they need to do right away just because someone tells them to. Mm -hmm. Then um, they can guard, they can protect themselves. That's the right. best way of protecting themselves. Same with um, telephone calls that they get. The phone calls often will say, you need to act on this right away or I need to discuss this mm -hmm. with you right away. If you can't and you're busy or something, you're under no obligation at all to make a, to continue with that conversation. Yeah. You can simply hang up and then mm -hmm. you can always call that call them back if it's a bank. Um, you can call the bank back and say, did somebody call me from here? And then if you're making the phone call, you know that it's not a scam right. if you're the one placing mm -hmm. the phone call. Right. So that, that's the, the best thing they can do is just to stop and think before they act. Okay, well, let's stop there and think of what we're going to talk next. <laughs> we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. A lifetime of savings can disappear overnight. Millions of dollars are stolen every day from unsuspecting older adults by family members, caregivers, and trusted professionals. If you suspect financial exploitation, call the Elder Care Locator at 1-800-677-1116 or go online to the National Adult Protective Services Association to be connected with help in your area. In this country, a senior is a victim of identity theft every four minutes. I'm Frank Abingdale with three tips to help protect all seniors from identity theft. First, never give out your personal information over the phone or online to someone you don't know. Second, don't leave your wallet, Medicare card, checkbook, or mail unattended. Third, check your credit regularly. Keep your golden years golden and your identity safe. Visit the website on your screen for more information. Welcome back. Earlier in the show, we were talking with Joan O'Brien from the Hammond County District Attorney's Office, and we were talking about the different kinds of scams that are targeting our area and types of scams that could be continue, that can continue this season. Um, it's springtime, and we're all doing some upkeep around our homes. We're probably going to be doing some renovations and hiring perhaps some contractors, and we want to make sure that consumers protect themselves by hiring a licensed registered, reputable um, contractor and not just one that claims to be one. Um, consumers can call our office to verify whether or not that contractor is legitimate. Um, they can check with the Better Business Bureau. They can Google the name of the contractor. There's tons of things that they can do and for more information you can visit our website. There is a ton of information on there as well. Um, they also, I'm concerned about consumers disposing of documents this spring when they do their spring cleaning and they're getting rid of old bills and, and bank statements, please use a shredder. It's extremely important with the uproar and identity theft. Um, there's still individuals out there that rummage through, through trash and you certainly don't want to expose yourself to any more risks of becoming a victim of identity theft. So I'm going to talk again to Joan O'Brien and she's going to give us some really wonderful tips and share some wonderful stories of, unfortunately, they're wonderful for us because they empower us, but they're unfortunate for the victim. But she is going to share some stories with us now. You mentioned earlier in, in the break that there was a case that you recently um, prosecuted, and I thought it'd be important for our viewers to, to listen to that situation and as a learning tool. Well, uh, this was last year, mm -hmm. um, and what happened was uh, someone had come to the door of someone's mm -hmm. home and said that they had been working uh, one street over, and it, I believe it had to do with some sort of tree removal. So they wanted to discuss the trees on their property. And of course, this 
individual thinking that it was fine because they weren't inviting this person in the house and they said let's just go around the back and they did and while that person was in the back looking at the trees and thinking that everything was fine there was an accomplice that entered the house and proceeded to go through the house and steal what they could and then go back and then when everything was done this person in the backyard went back to their truck and left and this person didn't realize what had happened until she went looking for things noticed things things were amiss and then called the police and it come to find out that's what ended up happening with these individuals so just because somebody comes to the door and says I want would you mind coming out in the backyard or can you come out to discuss or, or whatever you don't need to do that um, you're home by yourself or even if you're with somebody and you and your husband want to go out in the backyard and, and discuss something with that particular person who um, in this case was not a contractor because as I said before most of them are very reputable and good mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, it's better that you do it when it's good for you so if you're home by yourself don't do it say why don't you come back in a few days when my husband will be here or my son will be here or daughter or somebody else or today's not a convenient time there's nothing wrong with telling people that it's not a convenient time to discuss things whether it's over the phone or whether it's somebody coming to your door they are interrupting you you are under no obligation to do what they're asking you to do so you can certainly make a different appointment or when they tell somebody when they call you and it's over the phone and they say I would like you to do this now um, let's discuss this now I'll keep you on the phone for five minutes you can simply say it's just not a good time there's nothing wrong with with doing that because they're interrupting your day and you should do things when it's convenient for you you mentioned tree removal mm -hmm. and I like to suggest to consumers that always verify that that contractor or that tree removal business has insurance mm -hmm. True. if the job goes wrong and the tree goes in the wrong direction and your home suffers damage or the neighbor's home or a fence that separates the two homes, who's going to be responsible for that? Mm -hmm. So consumers should always, you know, do research and verify. They can tell you. I can tell you right now that I'm this and I'm that. And when you do the background, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. So consumers should always verify and ask, you know, say, well, can you give me your insurance agent's name? And call the insurance agent or the insurance company and verify that um, that insurance company or insurance policy is actually in effect. I've That's had consumers call and they say, oh yeah, they, I called and the policy was canceled. So verify. You have nothing, if they, if they don't want to give you the information, then you know what, there's other businesses out there that will give you the information who will be happy to have your business as well. Mm -hmm. So don't give in to pressure. Right. Mm -hmm. If you do your homework ahead of time mm -hmm. you can save a lot of headaches going forward you can. because mm -hmm. waiting one day to verify that information or to do your homework can save you from having to chase somebody down because you gave them money and they didn't come and do the do the work that they mm -hmm. were supposed to or there was an issue with the insurance or something and that that can just save you so much time and energy going forward if you just wait exactly. so that is the smartest thing to do and if I can also add one more thing is always get it in writing get mm -hmm. the job that's going to be done and the price mm -hmm. because I've had consumers you know say well this is what happened they told me one price and then I got a bill in the mail for more money mm -hmm. or they claim that the job cost more or they charged me for the removal and that was never discussed they claimed they would take the tree down well what about once the tree is down who's going to take it well mm -hmm. they just took the tree down they left me with all their, the debris you want to know everything and you want your contracts to state everything mm -hmm. so that there's no issue later on and if, if they if you want something added to the contract mm -hmm. and they don't wish to do that or they say don't worry about it I'll take care of that there's no obligation again to to sign the contract thinking that oh well this person seems as though they're they're friendly and they're nice most people are when they're looking to get something from you mm -hmm. so the best thing to do is just say well I'm not really comfortable with it this way so I'd rather mm -hmm. not sign it and call somebody else there's always somebody else that can come and do the work for you right and consumers do they, they do give into pressure they're mm -hmm. quick to sign things they're quick to say yes and then they have buyers remorse and that mm -hmm. happens with everything that happens with when they buy a car 
-hmm. when they buy furniture and they take it home and they realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not prepared for this. I really don't like it or mm -hmm. I can't financially afford it. I want to take it back. Mm -hmm. And it's not as easy to take things back. It's not as easy to reverse the deal, especially if there's a contract involved. So consumers need to remember these things. That's why we, we have this program, the Consumer Toolbox, to give them the tools they need to make informed decisions. And um, I hope that everyone who watches um, is becoming more and more savvy and feeling empowered and um, getting educated because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So is, it, is there anything else you want to talk to us about? Any information that you want to share with our seniors and our viewers because they're not all seniors. Um, but any other cases, any other informative tips that you can give? Well, th uh, this is something that we had not discussed um, prior, but uh, one thing that I just want all the women out there to be careful of is when they go to the grocery store and they're shopping, well, either at the grocery store or anywhere where they're, they have a mm -hmm. cart, please do not leave your purses in the top part of the cart. Understood. We've had more problems with purses being stolen or even just wallets being stolen because what I found is uh, when I go to many of these speaking, when it, many of these presentations, mm -hmm. people will say, well, I leave it there, but I lock it in. And I said, that, that lock really doesn't do anything for you. We've had people, it, it, it literally is a split second when people's backs are turned and purses are just taken and the people walk away. They don't run, they don't make a fuss so nobody notices and it literally can only take a second. We see these it, these cases all of the time and it's just so easy to remedy. I, I go to the grocery store and I see it on a regular basis and you don't have to be an elderly person. It's young people, mm -hmm. it's old people, it's everyone. And so I tell them, I, every time I go anywhere, I tell people that I'm the they same have way. I tell to them, do that. I tell them too, excuse me ma'am, but you may want to secure your purse. And and mm -hmm. it's just a matter of just turning for a second and picking something up that we, we had a case that way. And the woman was leaning over to pick up some produce and someone walked up took the purse and literally walked out the door. Oh, they and distract you. They had their two parties. One distracts you to ask you a question about a product while the other one is going through your, through your purse. Absolutely, it happens. So, so mm -hmm. please, that, that could be, that's a very important thing and very easy to remedy. They steal your credit card number <laughs> without going into your purse with a skimmer. What makes you think they're not going to want to take your wallet? That's right. So consumers need to be aware. Mm -hmm. and, and don't carry, now that you're talking about wallets, don't carry all your credit cards on you and mm -hmm. don't carry your social security card on your person. That's right. unnecessary. Don't carry your passport. Mm -hmm. I've seen met people who carry their birth certificate on their person. Oh, I never know when, when I may need it. Do you actually need to carry it? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Don't carry it on you. So limit the information that contains personal information on you. You mm -hmm. don't need to. And then keep it at home but keep it secured. Mm -hmm. Don't keep it on the counter, don't keep it on, on, on your dresser. Put it away, store it away where it's secure and away from other people's you know, exactly. eyes. Exactly. Because everyone's scoping for your information. That's Identity true. theft is such a big problem today. That's true. So are there any programs that the DA's office is, in, is promoting? Well, a community outreach is a big component of uh, District Attorney mm -hmm. Galuni's administration. So we have a separate unit. We're doing new things mm -hmm. all of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anyone would like to have us come and present any of the Council on Aging's or any of the senior centers, please contact our office. And, and our we'd num be happy. your number is displayed at the bottom of the screen. And we'd be so. happy to set something up and come and um, discuss anything that you'd like to discuss regarding Wonderful. fraud. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining Thank me today. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Well, viewers, I hope you found today's program informative and empowering. If you liked what you heard and you want to stay informed, I encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Springfield LCP. You can also find many resources and information on our website at SpringfieldCityHall.com. But most importantly, you may reach us at 787-6437 if you wish to ask a question or speak to a mediator. Thank you for watching the Consumer Toolbox, and I'll see you again very soon.